Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel! Surprised to hear my voice in a non-review video? <laughs> well, I just thought it would be cool to make some random voiceovers uh, once in a while. I've actually been thinking about doing this for so long, but the truth is whenever I try to come up with something to talk about during the video, I get completely blank. <laughs> So bear with me, please. I'll be trying my best to entertain you for as long as this video gets. Uh, so today I'm drawing Marnie from the Pokemon Sword and Shield video games. I'm always so late at getting into trends, but I hope that this will be still a hot topic by the time I post this. <laughs> because uh, for those who don't know, Okay, like, I'm about to spill all my secrets now. <laughs> nah, not really. Uh, but for those who don't know, uh, I don't post my content right after I finish it. I first put it up on Patreon along with some other exclusive content, so my Patreon supporters get to see everything weeks beforehand. So most of the times when I post a new video or artwork on my public galleries, Chances are, I drew that piece up to a couple months ago, probably. <laughs> Me and my them schedule. <laughs> but yeah, back to the point. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to ramble a lot today. Sorry in advance, guys. <laughs> uh, I wanted to draw Marnie because she's so cute. <laughs> Even though I don't usually like characters with black hair or leather clothes, I guess... Her adorable hairstyle and pinkish dress was what caught my attention. I've got a sketch for Nis Nessa, Nisa, I don't know how you pronounce that. <laughs> but I've drawn her too. Um, I hope I will finish that someday. <laughs> ah, there's so many things to draw in so little time. I've also drawn some Raihan and Leon stuff, but <clears throat> those are some kinky arts, so I should move to a safer topic. <laughs> I gotta say I haven't played the game myself, though. <laughs> Pokemon was one of my favorite games when I was a little girl back in the days. <laughs> and I still replay some of the old ones from time to time. But their newest stuff... Oh, doesn't really catch my eye. There has been so many changes. Some of them really cool and others not so much in my opinion. What can I tell you? I'm a no nostalgic lady. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, you might have noticed that I started to speak on Clip Studio Paint. Don't get too excited if you are hoping to see me do this piece entirely on this program though. <laughs> I had to change the side eventually for the coloring. <sighs> I've been trying to get used to clip lately. You'll see more videos of it in due time because I've been experimenting with it and trying to learn all the cool tricks. But I don't feel much comfortable with it when it comes to coloring. And I already struggle enough as it is when I'm doing that on Sai, so to save me some stress, I just switch programs whenever I need it. Honestly, I like Clip Studio for sketches and liner. There's some very nice brushes with cool textures, and being able to work with vector layers for the line art is a pretty interesting feature in my opinion that has definitely helped me a lot when I've got to draw some more complex characters with a tone of details. But yeah, when it comes to applying color, I'm not all that comfortable here yet, so I'll go back to Sai in a moment. So here we are. Good old Sai with its simple tools, yay! <laughs> now let me explain you what I'm doing here because this is the first time I'm using this coloring technique on my channel. Not sure if this has a specific technical name but you know, usually uh, what most of us do when we reach the coloring stage is to apply base colors and then put shadows on top of those layers. But 
You see, some other artists have a different way to color stuff, which is to start with a grayscale. So what I'm basically doing here is try to color this picture as if it was meant to be a black and white print. Uh, this method helps you focus on the contrast between the different elements of the picture. Like, you see that for Marnie's dress, I'll be keeping the shadows pretty mild and soft, while on the jacket I'll try to give it some more contrast between the light and shadowed parts. This was really hard to be honest, it's the first time I'm doing this on my art. I thought it would be an interesting experience. It's nice to do that kind of stuff uh, once in a while. You know, challenges take you out of your comfort zone and force your brain to come up with new ways to solve things. Sometimes the result won't look good, <laughs> but don't think you have failed. Even if you don't notice it right away, you'll always learn something from the experience. I honestly had to cheat a lot and use the brightness contrast filter to get things working. I never thought this would be that hard because, you know, absence of color, things should be easier because you don't have to worry about saturation, but wow, <laughs> guess I was wrong. Applying shadows on the dress was rather easy for me. I guess it's because I wanted to keep them pretty light to make the fabric look soft. But the jacket, oh, it was such a struggle. I hate drawing leather, why would I do this to myself? <laughs> it's for the sake of the cuties, Rina. Be strong. <laughs> Uh, I should get back to the actual explanation, probably. <laughs> so, when you've got the grayscale sorted out and everything has some proper contrast, which I'm sure I did not do, but hey, <laughs> not bad for first try, I guess. <laughs> uh, you want to put that layer on multiply mode and then apply the base colors underneath. It looks like shit, I know, don't worry, we're not done yet. After this, you're supposed to edit the shadow colors. There are many ways to do that, or I think there are many ways. Uh, I felt like the easiest one was to get the selection of one of the base color layers, then go back to the grayscale one, lock the opacity and paint on it with the airbrush or use the hue saturation filter to adjust the grays. If any pro artist who uses this method is watching this video and losing their shit right now, well I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm still learning how these things work, <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to be very messy. <laughs> From here on, it's mostly editing. Sometimes I did that on the shadows layers, sometimes on the base color ones, and others I simply painted on a new layer at the top of everything because I had no idea how to make things look a certain way. <laughs> See what I told you before? Challenges make you think differently. Years ago, I would have never thought uh, about fixing details by painting over the picture. I'm a very methodical person, so, you know, I tend to think that uh, things must be done in a specific order or a specific way if I want to make them look good. So the idea of, screw it, I'm just gonna make a new layer at the top to cover my mistakes, would have probably never crossed my mind. <laughs> and that's the cool thing about art, there's no correct way to draw things. I think as long as it looks good for you in the end, it doesn't matter if your workflow is messy or super neat. Um, I'm not sure what to talk about here because like I said, I just went on editing things and fixing stuff in a very messy way. <laughs> so since this is a Pokemon themed video, I guess I could talk about that. Uh, ah, 
What do people talk about for Pokemon stuff? Favorite Pokemon, probably? Favorite starter? Mm. Well, considering that nowadays we've got like a thousand Pokemons out there, it's hard to pick just one favorite. But I'm gonna go with one that has been one of my favorites for a while, which is... <laughs> I bet you're probably all going to laugh now. <laughs> but it's Quagsire. <laughs> I don't know, I fell in love with it when I played Pokemon Colosseum and ever since then it's been a must-have on all my teams. I don't know, it's so cute in my opinion and I love uh, dual types or duo types, I don't know how you say that in English. Uh, although water, earth might not be one of the best combinations, I gotta admit that. But you know, I just like it. I like uh, uh, its design and it works good for me. <laughs> I also like um, Ampharos a lot and Slurpuff. Those three are probably my top three right now. And my Fab starter... Mm, I usually go for the fire types except on the most recent Pokemon games because I didn't like their designs that much but I think my fab starter is Charmander <laughs> I warned you earlier I'm an old basic lady <laughs> I don't know I remember having this Charmander t-shirt when I was little I guess I can't get rid of my love for the original ones Did you know that the Spanish version of the Pokemon Sword Shield games, uh, Marnie's got her name changed to Roxy? <laughs> Basically, all the names were changed and honestly, some of them won't make any sense to me. Like, what's the problem with Marnie? It's not like Roxy is a very Spanish name, you know? They could have just called her, I don't know, Maria or Mariana or something that looked a bit similar to the English or Japanese versions. Honestly, they screw up most of the names, which is sad, not just because I don't see the reason why they should do that, but also because it gets confusing. Like when I first saw people using Marnie to refer to what I knew as Roxy, I thought they were talking about an entirely different character and it took me a while to figure that most of the characters had had their names changed to things that weren't even remotely similar. I mean, they called Nisa Kathy or Kathy or... But, like, how is that supposed to give me any hint that she's a water gym leader? It's crazy! Oh look, here comes the eyes! I should make a tutorial about them someday too. <laughs> I've got so many videos and tutorials I want to do. I'll tell you something, most of the times I don't know what I'm doing when I'm coloring the eyes. <laughs> I just, I don't know, add highlights, add shadows, add sparkles and stuff until I think it looks good somehow. <laughs> ah, now for the hair, I colored that with my usual technique though, because the grayscale thing was so so difficult. Especially because I also struggle a bit when shading dark hair, so I prefer to do that in my usual style. I don't know how to explain what I'm doing, to be honest. Uh, usually when I work on the hair, I work it as a whole. Like, I apply some 
uh, rough highlights and shadows to get the main idea of how I want things to look like and then I just clean that little by little uh, refining shapes, adding different values to the shadows and such. I'm messing around a lot lately when I'm coloring hair. I can't really decide on a style. So I just, I don't know, go with the flow, with what the character inspires me, with what the colors allow me because <laughs> really I sometimes don't know how to how to color some some hair colors <laughs> so I draw and erase and draw and erase all over again until I have something that my eyes think looks good Oh, this is a little trick of mine that I use when I'm coloring dark hair. Um, usually I feel like uh, the hair looks uh, like too grayish, too black in the sense that uh, it doesn't pop, it's kind of boring. So I make a new layer on top of the hair and color it with a vibrant color like sometimes it's some kind of pinkish others it's more um, a deep blue or a deep purple and then set it to overlay and lower the opacity this is mostly to give it n not a black black look but a black that leans towards another color you know like uh, a little bit of red or a little bit of blue Sometimes uh, I also mix them, instead of just using one color, like here I used uh, some kind of reddish tone, uh, sometimes I make a mix. I use the airbrush and put a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow at the points where the main light source should be. And as the layer is set to overlay mode, uh, then it makes the the hair color pop more. It, it still retains that dark essence but you know it's not that boring dark from the beginning. And once the picture is pretty much done I make some color and light adjustments. Uh, usually I do that by making uh, overlay layers at the top and go with the airbrush and a yellowish color or other vibrant colors. Other modes such as screen or luminosity work nice too. It all depends on what I'm aiming for. Here I thought that I could push the leather-like texture of the jacket a step further, so I added more highlights as well as some more shadows under her breasts for bigger contrast and, you know, just little adjustments here and there. I also like changing the line art color because I don't like it being completely black. So what I do is make a new layer, clip it on top of the line art group and just paint over it with the airbrush or other tools, but mostly the airbrush. Sometimes I also set the line art as multiply or lumi shade mode. It all depends on how I want the picture to look like, so you guys should experiment with that too. Then I merge everything, save it in a new PSD file and keep playing with overlay layers and colors to make everything pop and add more light and shadows to the overall image. And I can't believe this but we're reaching the end of the video, <laughs> wow, <laughs> really can't believe I've been talking to you for like 20 minutes or so already. <laughs> I didn't think I would be able to talk for so long, honestly. 
So how do you like this type of video? Would you like me to make more random voiceovers like this in the future? I'm not saying I will, because you guys really have no idea how hard it was for me to do this. I'm a very shy person and opening up to others or just talk about myself is pretty hard. But yeah, I would love to know if you enjoy this type of content or if you'd rather I stick to normal speed paints and just leave the voice over for reviews and actual tutorials. I'm gonna put up a poll at the top right corner so feel free to vote there. And if you like this type of voiceovers, you can also leave some suggestions on the comment section about what you'd like me to talk about in the future. I don't like sharing very personal things about myself or my life, but hey, I'm open for ideas. <laughs> and it's time for me to say goodbye now. Don't forget to check out my Patreon for more cool exclusive content. You'll gain early access to my illustrations, videos, doodles, features and a lot more things, as well as supporting me so I can keep creating more arts. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, bye bye!